hi 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 hello friends welcome to t academy in this video we will discuss the question paper asked in this year and this month june this paper is uh, is at a diploma level standards so it will be useful for your uh, uh, exams of uh, sub engineer or technical assistant or ist engineer examination okay so this paper will have a total number of questions are 100 so we will discuss that questions in this session here okay so let's start the first question here ohm's law is not applicable to so you know the limitations of the ohm's law i have written the limitations of ohm's law here so what are they with the temperature changes the ohm's law cannot be applicable if you have studied the ohm's law at your diploma level or at your uh, btech level or at your uh, viva so what is ohm's law means first you start with at constant temperature so here if the temperature is not constant then ohm's law is not applicable here okay so not applicable for non metallic conductors you know that okay and not applicable for non linear devices like diodes zener diode etc etc so diode zener diode are nothing but semiconductors so what i mean to say here it is ohm's law is not applicable to semiconductors that means the ohm's law can be applicable to dc circuits high currents small resistors so high currents small resistors means both are same only when the resistor is small current will be high okay for dc circuits as well as ac circuits also will uh, ac circuits at the lower frequency you can apply okay so for dc circuits you can apply higher currents small cur resistors okay semiconductors it's not applicable here so next one so here when n cells each of emf e and internal resistance r are connected in series across an external resistance r the current i through the external resistance r is given by so here we have n number of cells are there let me take one cell here emf we have one e battery which having emf e likewise we have how many n times and they are having some internal resistance of r okay so r the, how many n times and then we have a external resistance capital r here okay so this is the circuit and here in this circuit we need to find the value of current here so current i here so i so i is nothing but total emf that is n into e divided by total resistance n into r so n into small r plus capital r here i will write it again so n e by n into r plus capital r so this is the formula of current here if you see here the option i uh, first one will be the correct answer for this question here okay so next one find the thevenin's equivalent resistance rth across the terminals of a and b so if you see in here said here we have terminal a and here we have terminal b and uh, here there is a voltage source is there here we have voltage source is there in order to find the rth what we will do is we will do if it is a voltage source we will make it short circuit if it is a current source we will make it open circuit here so as per this concept we will make it short here and we will make it short here okay now what is the r equivalent value or rth we can say rth is nothing but so see observe here these two are in series so 6 okay is in parallel with what so this resistance so 6 this is over okay plus so this is will be in series here so 3 okay after that this entire combination will be is in parallel with 6 again here this resistance okay this will be and plus 2 okay so simply 6 is in parallel with 6 means uh, 6 into 6 by 6 plus 6 okay 36 by 2 all is nothing but 3 so 3 plus 3 is in parallel with 6 again plus 2 here okay so 3 plus 3 means 6 again 6 is in parallel with 6 means same 6 plus 6 is nothing but 3 here so 3 plus 2 which is nothing but 5 ohms is the answer so for this question rth will be 5 here okay so we'll move to the next question here right in capacitor the electric charge is stored in okay in a capacitor so capacitor is nothing but a dielectric medium separated by two conducting plates like this here so this is the dielectric medium here now the charge is stored in this dielectric medium here so answer will be dielectric medium okay next one 
So, here the question is little bit critical uh, tricky let us see here the line A to neutral voltage is 10 at an angle 15 degrees for a balanced three phase star connected load with the phase sequence ABC the line voltage VBC is given by <laughs> ok. So, for this uh, question I have taken uh, this phasor diagram for explanation point of view. So, this is not given the question. So, I had taken it. Now, what is the given question V a n the given. So, V a n is nothing but how much they given ok. So, 10 at an angle 15 they given. So, 10 at an angle 15 degrees they given mentioned here. Now, observe here. So, where is the phasor diagram here we have V b c. So, we need to find this value of V b c here. How much angle exists between these two 90 degrees ok. So, the phase sequence is in clockwise direction and the vector diagram is nothing but anti clockwise direction. So, we, we are talking about the vector here ok. Now, what is a V b c? So, V b c is equal to so root 3 times that of V n ok. That is nothing but a root 3 into 10 ok. What about the angle here? So, here we have a angle 15 observe how much angle here it is here we have 90 degrees and we are going in this direction ok. Either you can go in this direction or you can go in this reverse direction. So, if you are taking the reverse direction you will have to take minus 90 sign here that is nothing but root 3 into 10 at an angle minus 75 degrees. So, that will be the answer here. So, in this case the option here it is a C ok. So, in this questions I have skipped the option numbers here uh, A, B, C, D or 1, 2, 3 ok. So, the answer will be here 10 root 3 at an angle minus 75 degrees ok. So, if you are going opposite direction I mean if you are going like this. So, how much you have to add? So, either you have to uh, 270 minus 17 ok there will be the, uh, that will be the another option here. So, minus 75 or 270 minus 15 here sorry. So, this will be the another option for this question here ok. Next one this question is from the transformers. The question here it is the magnetic core of a certain material is operated at constant flux density. The core losses is measured 50 edges and 75 edges respectively are 2000 watts and 375 watts that is a 3375 watts. The history uh, the hysteresis and uh, eddy current losses of the core at 100 heads would be ok. So, this uh, problem requires some mathematical solution here. So, I have taken here what is the total losses? Total losses is nothing but iron losses here. Iron losses is equal to A f plus B f square. So, where A f indicates hysteresis losses B f square indicates eddy current losses here. First case the given double 3 7 5 here in the question itself ok that will be at 75 edges ok. So, that will be at 75 edges the given. So, let me correct here. So, here uh, ok here I will take here it is 50 here it is at 2000 and here we have double 3 7 5 ok right. So, if you are operating at 50 edges so, 50 edges 2000 watts will be the here and A into 50 plus B into 50 square this will be equation number 1 and here we have double 3 7 5 and this will be equation number 2. So, once you solve this equation here you will get a, a is equal to 30 and B is equal to 0 0.5. So, from this the history is last is nothing but A into F. So, what is the A value A is nothing but 30. Now, they are asking at 100 edges. So, 30 into 100 is nothing but 3000 watts here ok. And similarly, eddy current loss is nothing but A into B uh, sorry B into F square here. So, B into F square. So, B value is 0 0.2 and F is nothing but 100 into 100 you will get a 2000 watts. So, from this what you can observe here it is a the history is losses are greater than the eddy current losses here ok. So, answer for this question will be so 3000 watts and 2000 watts. So, answer will be this one. Next one which of the following is not a ferromagnetic material ok. So, for this answer I have taken this list here so, list of list, uh, list of ferromagnetic material with its relative permeability. So, you have to understand this values here ok keep in your mind steel 
it will having a relative permeability from 100 to 4000 iron 5000 to 6000 nickel 50 to 600 ferrite 16 to 640 cobalt 60 to 250 and for a permeability of air is nothing but one okay relative permeability is for air is going to be one okay so from this you can see iron will have maximum relative permeability now the question is which is not a ferromagnetic material so iron you have seen here and here you have seen cobalt okay uh, next you can see nickel so these three are the ferromagnetic materials and what is missing here copper so copper is not a ferromagnetic material so that uh, here the answer will be copper here so correct answer is copper next one which of the following effect is used to use it in measurement of magnetic flux okay so answer is directly you can say Hall effect so direct theory question here okay next one a dynamo meter watt meter can be used for okay so here in the given itself they asked about the watt meter so watt meter will measure what power only so from directly you can say dc and ac power now we'll see what is a electrodynamometer type watt meter so what is it having so electrodynamometer type watt meter is used for the measurement of ac as well as dc powers okay so it will have two coils first one is a current coil which is having a less number of turns another one is a pressure coil which is having a higher number of turns okay and in series with it we have some resistance here to create the phase difference between this current coil and pressure coil here okay if you have seen the diagram here we here we have the fixed coil which is divided into two parts okay and here we have a moving coil like this okay you have to understand this diagram here okay next one moving iron and the PMMC instruments can be distinguished from each other by looking at we know that PMMC instruments is used for measurement of DC and moving iron instrument is used for the measurement of AC supply okay so for understanding purpose I have taken this diagram here so comparison between the scale of the MI and MC instruments okay see here here we have a symbol like this which is nothing but AC supply okay and this will be dash means it will be DC supply okay so we can distinguish between uh, between the uh, PMMC moving iron instruments by looking at the scale here okay, why because in AC instruments see here 0 here here we have 100 and here we have 300 it's a non-linear see here we have 10 0 10 20 30 40 50 the scale is linear here okay just like we have a small scales now for using for uh, drawing lines like that so it will have some same lines here linear okay here we will not have linear here so here we here it may be 100 here it may be some 180 like that so scale will be non-linear by looking at the scale you can say so pointer is not an option so pointer will be same in both the meters so pointer is not option terminal size is not option scale will be the correct option for this question here okay right so next question in a two watt meter method of three phase power supply one of the meter would read negative if one of the meter will read negative if see here so i have taken here the phi value and power factor value and readings here so you have to remember this table here okay so one question will be guaranteed from this table okay in your examination so please note on this okay so here power uh, power factor angle is 0 power factor is 1 so we can call say power factor here and the watt meter readings are given here okay when it is a 0 w1 is equal to w that means when the power uh, when the phase angle is 0 power factor is unity power factor and the both the readings will show same reading here next when 30 degrees means one watt meter will read twice of the another watt meter here so when 60 that means the power factor is 0 0.5 one watt meter will be the negative of another sorry one uh, one watt, uh, watt meter will read zero value okay so 90 means 90 means power factor will be 0 so 1 watt meter will be exactly opposite of the negative uh, another watt meter that means a negative value okay so see here when the power uh, when the power factor increases from 0 0.5 to 0 it means when the power factor is moving from 0.5 to towards 0 that means it is decreasing from 0.5 to 0 at that time watt meter will show negative reading okay so see what is the answer for this question here the power factor load is less than 0.5 yes okay when the power factor is moving towards the lesser side 
so at that time the wattmeter will negative so the power factor load is greater than 0.5 means it is moving upwards so that is not the correct okay so here we have some value okay it's not a negative here it has some value here okay so this will be negative sign we will move to the next question no? right the the fall in speed of dc generator due to increase in load can be corrected okay so here simply you can see here we have some electrical load here so here we have some electrical load here and as the load increases so the question is the speed the fall in speed of a dc generator so what the dc generator will do it will convert the given mechanical energy into electrical load or electrical energy here now as the load increases what will happen here the speed of the generator will decreases as the speed decreases what you have to do is you have to increase the input to the prime mover as the prime mover rotates fast then automatically the generator emf also increases here okay at that same time the speed will increase automatically electrical load will be supplied here so the answer for this question will be increasing the input to the prime mover so increasing the prime increasing input to the prime mover is a correct answer okay next one a in a four pole 25 kilowatts 200 volts wave wound wave wound dc separately exited generator the current in each parallel path will be so in a wave wound generator how many number of parallel paths are there the number of parallel paths are two in case of wave winding and uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, lap winding we have number of poles here okay so lap wound now we need to find the value of total current so total current it is equal to so 25 into 10 25 kilowatts means i am writing in terms of 1000 25000 divided by how much voltage 200 okay now now how many number of parallel paths in each connector so i is nothing but total current by 2 here that means 25 into 1000 divided by 200 into 2 if you solve this we'll get a 62.5 amperes so answer will be a here okay next one so if you have any doubts or if you have any previous question papers you can share me to my youtube channel mail id that is t e e a for u at the rate of gmail dot com okay now the direction of rotation of a DC shunt motor can be reversed by reversing so DC shunt motor means torque is proportional to phi into IA either you can change the flux or either you can change the current but not the both okay that means either you can change the supply terminals or either you can change the field terminals but not the both cases here so that means either you can change the field or you can change the armature terminals is the correct answer here next one the efficiency of a dc motor when developing maximum torque will be so you have studied the maximum power transfer theorem or you have studied the dc machines there you can say that the back emf eb will be equal to v by 2 at that condition the maximum power will be developed at that condition the efficiency will be what 50% only okay efficiency will be what 50% only so answer is 50% here next one A DC shunt machine connected to 120 volts mains has its armature resistance of 0.1212 and field resistance of 50 ohms. Find the ratio of speed as a generator to the speed as a motor and the line current in case being 80 amperes. So this is the question they asked here. Now what we need to find here? First of all, understand the concept here. there are one machine which acting as a generator and another machine acting as a motor you need here to kind of find the current here now what is this current here so see here uh, here we have the field winding like this and here we have the dc motor armature okay now the line current they given as 80 amperes how much voltage here we have 250 volts they given and what is the current carrying by it we don't know we have to uh, current is 80 amperes here and what is the field resistance is 50 ohms and here we have 0.12 ohms here okay fine now if the same machine acting as a motor first of all i'll tell you 
so here what will be the current drawn by this field winding so 50 volts means uh, if will be 250 by 50 is nothing but 5 amperes here the current will be 5 amperes now if the machine is acting as a motor i am telling as a motor then it has to draw some current the line current will be 80 and here armature current will be what so armature current will be so 5 amperes is going here so 80 is coming how much here 75 amperes so ia is equal to 75 amperes it's a machine acting as a motor okay now similarly if acting as a generator so let me take as a generator here so when the machine acting as a generator the entire current has to be supplied by this machine here at that time generating current will be so how much it is delivering here 80 it has to deliver again you have to 5 so 80 plus 5 is equal to 85 amperes hope you understand this okay so when acting as a generator a motor 75 amperes when acting as generator ia will be what 85 amperes it has to deliver from here now n is proportional to eb by 5 eb by 5 so based on the concept i have derived this equation lg divided by name is equal to eg divided by em so when acting as generator v plus ig into ra so what is ig value 85 and the em is equal to v minus ia into ra so ia is 75 amperes okay substitute these values in the equation that is 250 plus 85 into 0 0.12 what is 0 0.12 is nothing but armature resistance here is nothing but ra okay substituting this you will get the answer as a 1.079 Sir, you may ask a question, sir. For diploma level standard, these questions are asked here in the examination. We don't have calculators also, then how can we solve this? Listen, this is a competition, in, okay? This is a competitive examination. So, you don't have the right to ask, sir, this question is uh, having to be a little uh, mathematical calculations like that. It is not like that. So, either you have to give the answer or leave it. That's it, okay? So that means you have to prepare your examination in all the aspects. Next one, the effect of <coughs> armature reaction in a DC machine can be reduced by using. Okay, so we can reduce it by using. We know that comb commutating poles as well as compensating poles here. Okay. So next one here, the out of, oh, the sorry, the output of DC motor is dependent mainly on the output of a dc motor the power output is nothing but omega i into t or we can also call as a 2 pi okay n into t that means it depends upon the speed and torque so answer is it depends upon the torque and speed so answer a will be the right answer next one the speed of dc motor is so the speed of DC motor is nothing but basic formula is n is proportional to eb by 5. So directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely proportional to the flux here. Okay. So the answer is directly proportional applied voltage and inversely proportional to the flux here. Okay. Next question here. The transformer action requires. So transformer action requires it is a alternating flux. Okay, don't confuse the constant magnetic flux, constant magnitude of the flux. So okay, here we require constant magnitude. Okay, it, okay, constant not it's not a constant magnetic flux. Constant magnetic flux means it is a DC. So what will happen if you give DC supply to the transformer? The coil will burn. The coil will burn. If you apply the rated voltage, okay, VDC, then the transformer is going to be coil is going to be burned. So so that uh, it requires only alternating flux. So alternating magnetic flux it requires okay so answer will be alternating magnetic flux okay so thank you friends we will continue the this question series in the upcoming videos thank you have a nice day